Just like when we were in major keys and we talked about the primary triads, well, the same thing is true in minor keys. There are the primary triads in minor, which are the same. Uh, it's the one, the four, and the five. But obviously in minor keys, those three primary triads are all minor triads. Let me show you what I mean. So here we are in A minor. So it's the one, the four, and the five. So the one chord is, of course, A minor. Uh, the four chord is D minor. The five chord is E minor. So the one, the four, and the five. Now, if you check it out, just kind of get your brain around this. Uh, the secondary triads in C major, do you remember this, are two, three, and six, which are D, E, and A. Now you go to the relative minor, which is A minor. Look at the primary triads in A minor. They are D minor, E minor, A minor. So you see the relationship there? Um, now let's look at a couple of uh, just kind of typical minor chord progressions. I don't know if you guys would know this song, More Love, More Power. Now I moved to the key of E minor. E minor, so your primary triads are E minor, A minor, and B minor. Just circling back to where we started this chapter, remember that there are relative major and minor. So G major has one sharp. That's F sharp, right? So E minor, the relative minor, has the same key signature. One sharp, F sharp. So this is the E minor scale. That's why the primary triads are E minor, A minor, and B minor has that F sharp in it, right? Okay, so let's think of that song, More Love, More Power. More love. Four chord. More power. Five chord. Now, when we were talking about sevenths, uh, just like I was saying, I, I just naturally added the seventh to uh, the A minor and the B minor chord. Listen to what it would sound like without it. Here's it with the seventh. Same function, just a little bit richer. Another uh, minor song you hear in worship a lot is Awesome God. Let's go up to G minor. Okay? Use your brain, use your chart. G minor, what's the relative major of G minor? The minor is always down a minor third. So there's G. That means the major, relative major, is B flat. Key signature of B flat is two flats. So here's B flat major. E flat. So G minor shares that same key signature. The B flat, E flat. And the primary triads in G minor are the G minor triad, the one, the four is C minor, the five is D minor, right? If it helps, have your book open and follow along that chart so you can see what I'm doing here. So think of that song, Awesome God. Uh, Our God is an awesome God. Four, five, one. And again, I'm just adding the sevenths naturally. God is an awesome, here's without it, our God is an awesome God, here's with the sevenths, our God is an awesome God. Now, here's an interesting point. Remember we were talking about there's natural minor, what we're doing now is playing in natural minor, but remember those two variations, the harmonic minor and melodic minor? Now follow me on this one. Awesome God is interesting because in some places, it stays in natural minor, like right there. That's all the notes of natural minor. When you get to the end of the song, it leans into harmonic minor. And what harmonic minor does, uh, think of the last phrase. Uh, Our God is an awesome God. Now you see that F sharp in there, you say, now wait a minute, F sharp is not in the key signature of G minor. That's the note that makes it harmonic minor. It's that F sharp, listen to that last phrase again. 
Our God is an awesome God. That leaned into harmonic minor for a minute. Now you could play that in natural minor without that F sharp. Just listen to the difference. Here's in natural minor. Our God is an awesome God. Here's the difference. Here's harmonic minor. God is an awesome God. You hear the, the slight difference that F sharp makes? Now it's interesting, harmonic minor, the one thing that does is it makes the dominant chord, the dominant chord is the chord built on the 5, we're in G, so the 5 is D. Harmonic minor, that F sharp, makes the D chord major. So it makes that final cadence, think back to our chapter on cadences, it makes that cadence chord a D major chord instead of D minor. D minor, natural minor, here's major. So that's a basic difference that harmonic minor makes. It turns the dominant chord, that strong cadence chord, turns it into a major chord. So it's a little bit more of a poignant final cadence for, for minor keys. You hear the difference there? So we're talking about cadences, it's worth mentioning that all of those same cadences that we talked about in major keys all work in minor keys as well. For instance, Awesome God that we just heard, that's a perfect example of an authentic cadence, the 5-1 cadence. Um, the plagal cadence works as well, the 4-1 cadence. Uh, one in particular that works really cool in minor, do you remember we talked about the Picardy third? That's the cadence where uh, you're heading for the minor key, for the minor tonic, the minor home bass, but instead of the minor chord, you substitute the major chord instead, and it gives you a really nice lift at the end. Uh, the Picardy Third was really, really popular uh, back in the time when Bach was making his music, which actually segues us really nicely back to that piece that we started this chapter with. You remember that? His D minor, Toccata and Fugue. <laughs> But you get to the end, instead of minor, you give it major. That's your basic Picardy third right there.